Good afternoon. On November 3rd, 2005, my father died. That day is etched in my memory as it is not just an end, it was a beginning. What happened that day touched off the perfect storm of depression and anxiety that hit me and my immediate family. Suddenly, I was dealing with a mess of doctors and of medications, of psychiatrists and talk therapists, and ultimately, I was having some pretty tough discussions with my own kids. I was plunged into a very dark world. On some days, it seemed that it was going to be unlikely that there would once again be even one day that wasn't going to be a battle. It was very hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Today, I'm actually happy for the hell that was. It taught me about myself and my family. It was through that storm that I learned that I had a mission to fulfill and I had a choice to make. I could take everything that was happening and ha had happened to me, shut out the world and stay silent, or I could get myself educated, build my inner strength, and become a crusader against the monster that is anxiety. Now, I know that anxiety is a normal part of life, in fact, people actually need it in order to fuel them into action or get out of the way of real danger. You might feel anxious with the problem with your friends, before writing an exam, or before making any important decision. But there's a line between functional anxiety and dysfunctional anxiety. When the anxiety is pervasive and gets worse over time, you need to seek help. When the anxiety thoughts interfere with your age-appropriate daily activities, you need an intervention. I had crossed the line. At this point in my life, I was, probably in your terms, a very old 41-year-old special education teacher and a mother of three and also the wife of a busy lawyer. Some might say this is not the best time to change the course of one's life, but the way I looked at it and believed, I had no choice. I chose to do what I like to do best and seems really appropriate while I'm standing here, and that's to return to school. I began the process to train as a cognitive behavior therapist. CBT is the go-to talk therapy that helps individuals learn how to think well. CBT endeavors to train people to realize the catalyst of all that they feel and all that they do is based on their thoughts and not the other way around. Anxious people, myself included, often feel physically unwell and avoid certain situations because of their anxious and distorted thoughts. I soon realized that changing my thinking was going to be the key to my recovery and the recovery of my children. Through my work and research, I soon discovered that there were thousands of children and parents who suffer because they lack the skills that I was fortunate enough to go to school and learn. I needed to take the knowledge and skills that I had garnered as a parent, an educator, and a remediation specialist and make the difference in the lives of others. Now, before I tell you how I did this, I want you to know that I truly believe three things. One, that knowledge is power. Knowing gives you time to prepare and the ability to make good choices. Two, you never know how like when you're in college or when you're traveling, but everything that you learn will be valuable to you at some point in your life. And three, nothing is achieved without dreaming big and working hard. So now the big question, how was I gonna take everything I'd gone through and everything I learned and turn them into something to help others? Well, spoiler alert, you got it. I began my lifelong dream at, to pursue and I wrote a children's book, Thinking About Thoughts. This book was my response to seeing around me children, teachers, and parents who did not know what anxiety is and the damage it could cause. They, they needed to learn that coping was a life skill. In other words, they needed to learn to cope and they needed to cope to learn. That book became my calling card and led me to establish a private practice counseling children and families, providing workshops, and doing professional training for pre-service teachers, teachers, and parent groups. It also led me to write a second book, Tell Me, which is aimed at families 
who, who need to understand the power of telling the truth as a way to alleviate anxiety and frankly, to address any difficult situation. In order to gain a wider audience, I was challenged because I had to learn how to sell on Amazon and I began a blog called Thinking About Thoughts, which I now see has regular readership in Canada, the US, Russia, China, France, and for some reason, I'm very popular in Latvia. <laughs> Anxiety is an evil menace. It sucks energy from the strong, it plays havoc with the physical body, and it prevents individuals from attaining their goals, especially those they really want to achieve. Learning to cope means to question your own thoughts and beliefs, making sure that your decisions are made by your rational self, the part of you that can judge what is true and most likely to occur. You need to believe the thoughts that are helpful and not those that aren't. Facing the monster means learning to cope with uncertainty and learning to take risks, knowing that you're going to be able to manage. I have learned that anxiety can be enabled or disabled. It is a choice to cope. It's often difficult, but never impossible to be resilient. I can say today that I have the best job. Every day, I get to work with young people from the ages of three to 22 who are working hard, learning about their thoughts, and challenging themselves to face their fears and overcome them. I get to see people who say that they can't turn into people who think that they can and become people who do. Believe me, it's a joy to watch. Anyone who suffers with anxiety is dealing with a serious challenge, but it is a fight that can be won. All of us have and will again face challenges in our lives. Hopefully you will have the strength, the resources, and the coping skills to rise above your challenges. And when you do, you can choose to forget about what you've gone through and move on, or you can pretend the problem never happened, or you can make the choice to embrace what you've learned, help others avoid the suffering you've experienced. My best advice would be make good choices.